Welcome to Ham Radio TV. I'm Jason, KM6FAK, the guy that's running the camera and getting these up on YouTube for you to enjoy. Okay, I went to a couple of motorhome rallies. I went to one in Pleasanton and one of my ham friends, there was several hams in our club. And one of the hams there brought this little U-Bit uh, 40. I think that's what it's called. And it was a $49 kit, about that big by that big, and he had it in a wooden box. And it worked 40 meters HF. And I thought, that is so cool. I'd like to get one of those. And so then I find out, just a few weeks ago when I talked to him, that they'd come up with a new one. I found out by going online and looking up Ubitix, or Ubit, and I found out that they've got one that works not just 40 meters, they had one that worked 20, then 40, and now we have uh, one that's out that works, uh, I don't know what meters they are. 80 through 10. 80 through 10. That's a, that's a big span. And up at, uh, down at 10 meters, the thing puts out 10 watts, and probably four up at the upper end. They don't advertise the four. So anyway, I thought, that sounds good. I wonder how much it costs. And I looked it up, and it was 109 bucks for the kit. But it also includes a four to six week wait because it's shipped through India Post because they're in India. And so I thought, what's the fun of this? And then they said, for another 10 bucks, we'll ship at DHL. And so we'll get there in a week. And so I posted my money and crossed my fingers and PayPal took it out of my wife's checking account. <laughs> I'm sorry. They took it out of the checking account that my wife uses. So anyway, after, uh, about last, when was it I got it? Monday. Sunday. Didn't come Sunday. Must have been. What? I ordered it on the previous Monday. Anyway, it came Monday. It was supposed to be here Tuesday. It came Monday, DHL. I knew it was DHL because it said Penske on the side of the truck. <laughs> so they're intermittent service. Anyway, it got shipped from India to Germany and Germany to, I think it was Cincinnati and Cincinnati to Sacramento. And it came in a little plastic box about that big, smaller than the cookie box back there. And then I decided, I've got a handout here for you, tell you a little bit about it. Can I get somebody to pass a few of these out? Just pass them around, send them back. It was developed by a guy named Asher Farahan in India. They're going back really slow. Throw them up, throw them up in here and let them grab. <laughs> okay, Asher uh, had built the Ubix, and the thing is called a Ubix, Ubix, U B I T X. Yes, it's, but it's called Ubit X, or Ubit X, by most people, but it's a micro bit X because it's the micro symbol. And it's a, it's a really keen little radio and gets lots of rave reviews when you go to the people that are selling it. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it was kind of a fun thing to pull out of the box. And I said, how am I gonna do this? It doesn't come with a case. It comes with no power supply, just a plug-in. I said, well, I got you know, a 30 amp power supply back there. I'll, That'll fry it real good for me. And then I managed to find a plug-in wall warrant that would work. Because I didn't want to fry it too hard. And I started working on it on Monday night. And Tuesday night, Wednesday night. But I was looking for a case. And I looked through my junk stuff. And this is something I bought in Quartzsite. Bought in Quartzsite about four years ago. 
I don't know what I paid for it. The price on it said five dollars, but it was a Radio Shack CB, and I'm sure I bought it with about five other radios, and they said just take it all. So I ended up paying for Yesu and a bunch of other stuff. But it says on this, this is type approved. It says uh, this device complies with Part 15 of FCC rules. <laughs> That's the parts that are in the trash can at home. <laughs> Down here on the bottom it says Radio Shack catalog number 21-1574. This is the only thing I had that was close enough to the right size to be able to stick the uh, board in. But in addition to putting the board in, I had a, a few other parts to put in. The board came, comes with the uh, offsets on the bottom so you can lift it above. But some people made these with wooden boxes. Other ones have made them with uh, some kind of a fiber box. Somebody's selling them from back east for fifty, uh, forty-nine dollars, includes shipping. And I thought about that, and if I look back at it, I say, well, I'm really glad I didn't do that because I got all this wonderful experience, and it was like ten times as hard as if I'd have bought the box from the guy. <laughs> it was well worth the, the fifty bucks. So if I order another one, that's what I will do. In the meantime, it it comes with a BNC connector, but this already came with a PL239, is it? PL239. SO239. SO239. So I just went from the connector that goes to the BNC, and I came over here, and then it, it came with a power plug, and I put that in, and I also had its own power plug, so I wired them together just in case. But one of the things everybody that I read about recommended is putting a fuse in. Why would you do that? <laughs> well, I can imagine several things. <laughs> That's weird. But this suggested a two amp fuse. So I put one in, not the way they suggested, but that's my nature. Uh, I found a better way. <clears throat> anyway, it comes with, what do they call this? A, <laughs> this this puts a diode in there to protect the thing if you back, if you reverse wire it. But I, the only discouraging thing was it has these three jacks that go on the front, microphone, speaker, and uh, keyer. But it doesn't. It has a schematic. The schematic has numbers on the the plugins. But the plugins themselves don't have any numbers on them, so you have to guess, kind of. So I've been working on that. I think you've got it just about figured out. And I soldered all the stuff in that has to be put in. I I worked on my Radio Shack. It turns out it was going to be about an eighth of an inch too small. And so if you can see this angle right here, I managed to push the front out an eighth of an inch. I used some shoe goo to make it solid, and then I wired up, it's got those three plugs, it's got a, the microphone is not hooked up here. I'm going to hook that up, but it's got all the stuff to do it with the jacks. It's got an on-off switch and a volume control, which I wired wrong, so I turn it on and turn down the volume. I fix that, and it's got a push button for function, uh, tuner, and the tuner is just infinite, right? And it, the faster you turn it, the faster it tunes. And I just had a fun time putting it together and a fun time with it. However, I was fully expecting, you know, I've, I haven't smoked for over 30 years now. And the last time I smoked, it was a PA amplifier. So I fully expected to draw smoke with this sucker. And I turned it on and it did not smoke. And, I, and then I heard noises and I found that I could tune into WWV. But I didn't want to transmit. I've got that tuned out because uh, the only antenna I've got is a uh, two meter. And that picks up WWV all right. But I'm not going to transmit on that antenna. So I've got a bunch of wire and I think I'm going to do something. So anyway, if you want, if you want to see this, would I recommend it? Yeah, I'd recommend you buy the, the $50 case 
your $100 radio. And it's uh, in the literature I handed out, you'll notice that one of the things he did to make you sympathetic, it, it helped me get my wife to accept it and let me order it because the, uh, the chassis itself, the, the board, is it pre-assembled and <coughs> tested and tuned and these 23 uh, wound, what do you call them, tyroids, tubaroids, anyway, that they're wound and everything's tuned by a co-op of women in India. Which, you know, when you tell your wife that, she says, oh, well, how thoughtful. And so I, that's the sales pitch. Any questions? How do you know where you're at? Yeah. Oh, here's a... What do you call it? Rudino? Rudino. Arduino. It's a, it's a two-line thing here, and it tells you whether you're on single side band, upper side, uh, upper side band, lower side band, CW, or other, and it tells you what your frequency is, and the faster you tune it, the faster the frequency moves. And there's a menu thing where you can actually jump from one band to the next. It's pretty fast. Any other questions? Would I do it again? I think I would. I'd take that chance again. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of hacks for it. <clears throat> well, one of the hacks allows you to put in a power amplifier, connect up a power amplifier to it so you can get, you know, 100 watts, 800 watts, whatever. And another hack is uh, put the fuse in, and there are several others, and there's a, a different software that you can program it with, and some of them have interesting features that make it a little easier on the programming. Other questions? Uh, I've got the 40 meter version of that, but there's a really there's really good support groups. All yeah. you can ask a question of if you haven't run into a problem with it, you can ask a question and you'll you'll get a response or you get a dozen responses real fast on it. Yeah, and I, I put the website that, <clears throat> of uh, what is it? HFsignals.com. You go there and it will lead you off to those various sites and stuff pictures and YouTube's got this on it. You can listen to people listening to it. And you can listen to people talking on it and you can see demos that they show how wonderful it is. That's it. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when a new video comes out.